we painted our death trap of a valve box bright orange so that nobody in theory would hit it and we've got a cap to put on it I'm just gonna leave that on there so that small children and birds don't try to make nests in here eventually we'll trim this down probably at or below ground level and maybe even cover it with something sturdy that way this doesn't get shattered from people driving over it if you remember that's the valve for the RV that will turn that leg of this system off we decided that today is a great day to enjoy some luxuries and also do a little bit of work I think the weather forecast says it's a high of about 67 today and this is very possibly the last cool day before summer really sets in. So I think we're gonna try to get done as much as possible. Our very first task is to finish threading this encasing on our poly right here. So hopefully we can get that to the bottom of the hill. We actually have two different sets to run and we're probably gonna run a we're probably gonna run out and have to go get some more, so we're trying to get this done early so that we can make it to the hardware store before it closes. So before we can thread this encasing on, we want to leave a rope inside the encasing just because it's easy to do now and it will save us a lot of effort down the road. But the rope is snagged at the top so Alyssa's got to go up there and release that. Um, we're also going to take a little bit of this three quarter back out so that we don't waste a bunch of it. We've got to get that rope down here to the end and then we're going to take this encasing and actually slide it over the two inch and three quarter and connect it all the way up there at that elbow. See, I give you your radio. It's on channel five now. Okay. So encasing come down, yep. rope comes down, three quarter comes up. Yes. Another one of our projects for the day is getting these hydrants all um, connected together and ready to be plumbed in. I think I'm ready for the rope now-ish. I don't know if you want to tag team that or not. I am ready on the rope. I'm unrolling it now, so feel free to pull. That's it, we're at the end. Perfect, I'm at the end down here also. Any reason I can't just leave it attached to the spool up here? Nope, that sounds like a good plan. Just make sure it's tied off so we can't accidentally yank it inside the con or the uh, encasement. Wow, this stuff has been laying out in the sun. It's like super malleable. Look at that. I think I'm now ready to pull the three quarter through to take up the slack if you're ready. You bet. I really won't be able to push much because it's so flimsy down here. So it's going to be all you, but there's no rush. So take your time. So even with my bare hands, when I pull really hard, my hands just slide down the tube, but it doesn't go. So it's almost like we need gloves that are like ridiculously grippy. Okay, so we'll leave that for another time. Um, that's not preventing us from putting the encasing on down here. So I guess just get your encasing and come down and we'll pull this back up the hill another time. Lately, we've had a lot of people asking us why we don't ask for more help. And it's not that Jesse and I are opposed to help. It's just a lot of our projects go like this. We don't even know what we need help with until we're doing it. And even then, a lot of it doesn't come down to needing more manpower or more hands. It's simply we need to think about what tool we need to get the job done. And at which point, it's still often a one or a two man job. Um, but there are things that we do need sheer help for. And we try to reach out when those moments come up. And we try to make sure that they're planned so that we're not wasting people's time doing this dance, walking around, trying to figure out what we need to do.
Um, this is never going to work, but I'm gonna try it anyways. Let's mount from the back, mount from the back. Da -da. So what, I can't move my hand, you know, whatever. Yeehaw! I don't know if we did this in a video or not. We actually installed one of these hydrants already on the RV before winter came. We did that partly so that we could seal up an opening where we had trenched to go into the RV. And what we're actually going to be doing is putting an encasing around the hydrant so that in the future, if we ever need to service the hydrant or remove it, we can do so without needing to dig down. Again, it's extra work. You could just direct bury these but in the rare situation that you need to actually remove the hydrant in the future, having an extra encasing around it just makes that task that much easier. It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of money now, saves a lot of headaches later. It's a good time to get this stuff through the casement while it's still pretty flexible. Let's see if she'll go in here without much fuss. Yep. Yeah, buddy. See if the two inch will be even remotely as compliant. <laughs> Look at that. It's like bulging the PVC. That's how strong that two inch poly is. I call it my encasement missile. Pew. This was version two. <laughs> the pipe mobile. Version one didn't even make it like three feet. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, you got quite That's the strap set up going here. Dude, you could haul like 20 Yay. times more pipe on this thing. Right? Look at you being all modest. It really hurt too, because going around the corners, it would like oh, smash my hands. I see. Yeah, get your so hand. like, <laughs> sometimes there's one hand in it like. <laughs> <laughs> A little farther. Good. Wow, this is a bad spot. Problem is the elbow has way too much angle. It's going over there, not down there. So it needs to be a 22 and a half, not a 45. Nyong. Incoming. Go. Go. Well, we've decided to go to a plan B today. Getting this piece of encasing on took 200% of our effort for such a pathetically small pipe. Tremendous amount of labor, and we've run out of material. So instead of continuing to work in the midday sun, which is probably actually one of the things that has made this project hard from day one till today, isn't the work. It's hard work, but it's the heat. Um, we are just not, we just don't like the heat. We don't like the heat whether we're golfing or working on physical things. So we're gonna make a supply run and take the afternoon uh, heat and spend it in the car, getting materials to help move this project along. But I think times like this is when people really let the scope of the project get to their head and they make poor decisions or decisions that aren't good in the long run because they're so tired of the project. So even though we feel this huge push to really get started on the house, we are still waiting. We're not doing this instead of, we actually are still waiting for our plans to come through. And most of the work is already done. Like, come on, can we just go the last bit to give us some, something so much better? So I think that's what's playing with our head now. We're still trying to do the right thing. Yeah, they're actually, if, and most homeowners or owner builders who build themselves, these are the people who don't pay someone else to do it. They say you can tell the moment when, when somebody just gave up on a project. Yep. Because everything's like perfect, perfect, perfect. And then the quality really starts to drop off. And this is that point on this project where we're so sick of it that we would be content to never look at it again. But we're still trying to keep our head and our wits about us and make good decisions. So, all right, let's forge ahead. Oh. Right here. There you go. This what one, you got there? This one came out. What you got there? Oh, he's such a cute little bundle. Oh yeah. Oh, he's toasty. Oh, yeah. What have you been doing? Have you been schlepping? 
You gotta be a million degrees, dude. This You're wearing a fur coat. This is the most lovable cat ever, but he does not like when people come over. Yep. So chances are, if you're watching this, you will never get to meet this kitty. We might be really friendly, but Bugaboo would rather you all just stay away. He doesn't away. know that he has an audience right now. Nope. Bugaboo would prefer you all stay away. Thank you. Thanks for staying away from Bugaboo's palace. So a seemingly innocent material run turned into a bit of a uh, meet and greet on accident. So, uh, we ran into quite a few people, which we weren't expecting. It apparently is a strong DIY Saturday. So I thought I'd take a moment and just say hi to a couple people. One is Robert. Uh, thank you for stopping and saying hi. We are always busy, so forgive us if we're a bit brief with saying hello, but hi, on camera. Also, random dude in Home Depot, didn't get your name. It was a little chaotic at the moment and the, the clock was ticking on getting supplies, so sorry we didn't take any time to talk with you, but hey, Thanks for saying hi. And finally, Richard, uh, thank you also for stopping and saying hi. Um, we don't always have time. We didn't expect this thing to get so big. So we're just average everyday people. We're just trying to get pipe before these businesses close. You gotta understand. Uh, so we need encasement down to here. Yep. And then um, we'll start with all of our fittings and start getting things kind of connected down here. So I will try to work on getting our um, hydrants kind of built yep. and that stuff. Okay. If you want to work on getting the encasement put together. Can I put on one more piece onto there? I think I can. I think it's at least Easily. one. Yeah. yeah, let's see where so, one gets you. I'll get all that done. One of the problems that we're going to have with these um, hydrants is that we've got these galvanized, which is almost a joke, um, street elbows. Um, and we left them out over winter and they got wet and look at this total rust buckets so much for being galvanized you know what actually i'll take it back i can see that the threads are not galvanized so that was my mistake it's part of property development is that you're super exposed so we've got to do something about that <laughs> That's a pretty good improvement. What I don't have is a wire brush for inside here. So I need to figure something out to clean those threads up. Before I keep working on this, I just had a tragic realization and that is that our pampering got neglected. So I need to go relight the hot tub. Burn, baby, burn. All right, pit stop to help Alyssa. Didn't go on there to me. It's okay, it's okay, back off. Like, better to not put it on there if it's, make sure it's wet. Yep. Ready? Yep. Wow. Lift your end up. Nothing. Hey, let's trade spots. Okay, going on. Go, 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 good. Good, good, good. Done. Bit of roll reversal. Now Alyssa's actually moving on to getting the hydrants built. So, so we're going to encase the hydrants, I think I mentioned this earlier, in the four inch PVC. To do that, she's measuring down here where these street elbows are going to penetrate the side and she's gonna use the hole saw. Right here. Okay, perfect. And then we're gonna drill a hole in the top of that cap to slide the hydrant down through. Let's laugh at how bad Alyssa is at pretty much everything. Why are you turning the drill? I'm not trying to, I'm, it's my attempt at street. That's why I said, watch Alyssa, she's bad at everything. But I do get the job done, so tell me it doesn't work. Well, this isn't very ideal, but we make do with what we have. Let's see if we can get a clean inside thread with this wire brush. I've also heard that Coca-Cola and a bunch of other things are really good for removing <sighs> rust, but I don't have any of that. 
all done. These are looking mighty fine. Probably better get some Teflon tape and get these put together before they decide to rot their brains out again. For those that aren't aware of this, this is what's called a double jointed street elbow. And the reason we do this is if you put a rigid connection in, hey bugaboo, what are you doing? If you put a rigid connection on the bottom of your hydrant and you were to hit it, like with a car or something like that, it would probably break at this connection. But with this double joint here, the, the standpipe can bend this way and this way on the connection, which makes it much more um, sturdy or tolerant to being banged around. Um, and this is such a cheap part, probably under a dollar or maybe two dollars. So it's worth doing if you're gonna put these um, standpipe type frost-free hydrants in, just a little extra insurance. And we're gonna do that on every single hydrant we have. This is what's called a weep hole. And the valve mechanism in here, when you open it, allows the water to go around because it plugs off the weep hole. When you close the valve, this weep hole is opened and that's what drains this standpipe, thus making this a frost-free spigot. So there's no water retained in this standpipe when you fully close the valve. And this is where it comes out. To help make this a little more tolerant to sediment and things, which can inadvertently find their way into the weep hole, we're going to put just a small copper elbow into this weep hole and turn it down facing. And that will prevent to some degree the um, propensity of sediment to go up into this little weep hole here. We're gonna do a different video on this topic, but this weep hole being exposed is the reason, one of the reasons, that these are non-potable rated because of this small weep hole being vulnerable to intrusion. And if that intrusion were to get into the water system, it could find its way backwards and would cause all kinds of problems for whatever system it's connected to. Next, this piece needs to go in here. So I'm starting to think that we might have put this on after sliding the hydrant through, threading it on. So looks like I could take this back off also. Looks all too familiar. Yeah. In case you were wondering, we're still hoping to go hot tubbing tonight. Well, I think uh, evening got the best of us. I think we did pretty good today. I think a lot of this stuff's hard. We go into the day, a lot of days with the best intentions, but there's unfortunately just a lot of errands to run. And then sometimes life gets in the way and like we actually socialize with people and, but it's okay. I mentioned a few of you folks earlier. Yeah. So here's hoping Alyssa puts you in the video. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, she edits a video, so yep. if you don't like it, you gotta talk to her about it. Yep, we had a few, a few diversions today that were unplanned, but I don't know. This is life. Mm -hmm. We don't have a critical attitude about it. It's just, it is, it is what it is. Yep. And these projects will be what they'll be. But yes, we made progress, which I think is good. But we have all that laid down there, which you can't see. Almost all so. of our double encasement's completely done. We've got to get it backfilled with sand and bedded in sand and stuff. But pretty good project for today. I had hopes that we would finish this entire system this weekend. It's possible. Tomorrow's Sunday. That's a lot of pressure for tomorrow. But, but we'll try. We're off to a good start tonight. We feel like we've got all the stuff in place. So good job today. It's hot, 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 that's for sure. This is Lynn. Did she get warm? Nope. Warm. Is it Jesse temperature? I know it's oh. not Alyssa well, temperature. Well, actually, it's not, not bad. Not gonna lie. It's not 102, but it's probably 80. 
Awesome Clumbo. It's almost 90, it oh, says. pretty good. Maybe we can hot tub. That's near the stove. Maybe stoke it and stuff our faces and yeah. come back and... We can't give up yet, it's early. If the camera can still focus, there's still time. That's true. <laughs> as soon as the camera stops focusing. It's done. It's done. Kill it.